So here's the demo of the first stage of modeling the 3D saucer. And first thing I might suggest is that you set up your screens so that you can see your tutorial as well as your animator window uh, in the same screen. And here's an easy way to do that. Select whatever you want to be on the left. Open up the other window so it's available as well. Click on the one you want to be on the left. Right mouse click in the taskbar and look for some way to panel them side by side. When you do that, you get everything laid out nice and easily for you. Uh, you can minimize other windows to get them out of the picture and try it again if need be. So we're going to start here in the window and we've got everything set up from the setup tutorial. We're starting with a sphere and a sphere is a special object, one of many, that can be drawn in Animator and it'll always be perfectly round, perfect round 3D balloon. Uh, but the magic happens when you double click it and the next instruction here is to change its diameter to 100 units and that's the nice thing about this particular object is you can resize it very very easily and you can reposition it too. The instruction after that says locate it at the center of the 3D universe and that is the origin. Zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Say OK and it moves things into a perfect 3D orientation there. And by the way, if you want to get a little preview of what things are looking like, Control R takes you into arc rotate mode and you can see what this thing looks like just by uh, scrolling around on the inside there with the left mouse button. Okay. Easy as that. You want to see what it looks like from the original view? Tap the 5 key on the numeric keypad on the right hand side and Control R turns off arc rotate again. Now, uh, next instruction here is to change the log longitudinal divisions so that it's going to be a little smoother around the outside. It's made of these things that are basically faces, points, and edges. And right now there's a limited number of these, but you can double click this object. And I'm going to change the longitudinal value to 24. I'm doubling the number of edges around here, or points around the outside for each one of these uh, horizontal bands. So it's a lot smoother around the equator. And that's the first step that we're doing. We're on to step two. The next step is to convert this thing. Now notice it has a yellow bounding box around it and that means that this thing is an object, a primitive object inside of Animator and has limitations. You can't actually change the relationship between these points at all. You can't squash it or stretch it or cut it or move it around or mutate it. We can change that though if we select the object and go to build, convert to mesh. And when it's converted to mesh you'll notice the bounding box has just turned white and that means we can do other things, which includes the next step, which we're going to do, which is to squash the sphere into a saucer. We only want to squash it up and down, so we want to turn off the X and the Y, excuse me, the X and the Z values and leave only Y. That means it can only be mutated along the Y axis. Once that's done, I'm going to use the non-uniform scale tool. Oh, there it is. And you simply drag, click and drag in the window somewhere, and I'm dragging up and down. You'll notice that sometimes you'll drag side to side and nothing happens. It's because there's only one orientation for this stuff. I'm going to squash it into a comfortable looking flying saucer shape. Done. The next trick, step four, is to hide the saucer. That's just the letter H on the keyboard. Tap it and things go away. And now we're going to repeat these things. We're going to create another sphere. Doesn't matter how big you make it because we're going to double click it and change its values to get exactly what we want. The other, this next sphere is going to be half that, the size of the original. It'll be 50 units across. And once again, let's change the location to 0, 0, 0. And while I've got the dialog open, I might as well finish the last thing, and that is I think I want to double the latitudinal uh, segments from 8 to 16, and that makes it smoother around sort of its outside edge that we're looking at there now and we also want to convert it to mesh. So build, convert to mesh. So we've just done the same thing twice. And now when we get to the next stage, this is where you're going to see how you start pulling apart these models and shaping them the way you want to. We want to go to um, point edit mode. We're at step seven now. And point edit mode are the three little dots up top here. And that means that we can start manipulating individual points, not just whole objects like this thing, but the points that make up the objects. And it also says change to wireframe view. Okay, wireframe view is here. Now you can see the individual points that make up the sphere. And it says use the drag select tool, right? And select only the bottom half of the sphere. So I've selected the bottom half of these points. I'll hit the delete key now. And now what we get left with is just the top dome. Nice. Uh, hit the delete key. Uh, we can go back to smooth shaded view and see what that looks like. Yep, that sure looks like the dome. 
and then we'll unhide the saucer by clicking in the top left corner of the toolbar return to object mode. oh we have to go to object edit mode first there it is back to object edit mode and then we can hit shift H on the keyboard to, to show all objects shift H done and congratulations you've just made yourself a flying saucer arc rotate a control R lets you rotate around it and when you're ready to go back and begin the next segment make sure you hit the 5 key on the numeric keyboard keyboard to look from the front view and control R will get rid of the arc rotate see you next tutorial